enroll your child for the manifested e-learning platform and see their grades grow tremendously. These videos can be downloaded to a laptop for offline viewing or viewed from a smartphone in a course-friendly format. Hello learners, welcome to the manifested e-learning platform. Today we are going to continue with the study of animals. The subject is science. Learners, welcome to the lesson. We are studying science and the topic is known as animals. 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 Now, learners, animals as things that are found in nature and is a very interesting subject. This one of animals. Animals are living things. Animals cannot be created. Animals cannot be made. You cannot make animals. These are things that are that we found we find in nature and uh, in this class we have been classifying animals that is what we have been doing in our previous lessons we have classified animals we have uh, studied uh, characteristics of different classes of animals in the first lesson learners we began by saying that Animals are broadly classified into two, the vertebrates and the invertebrates. We say that vertebrates are animals that have backbones. Invertebrates are animals that do not have backbones. Then we went further to classify the vertebrates, those animals that have backbones. We gave five classes of vertebrates. Number one, mammals. Number two, reptiles. Number three, birds. Number four, amphibians. Then lastly, fish. So learners, we discussed in detail mammals. We uh, gave examples of mammals. We gave the uh, characteristics of mammals. Then in another lesson, we did the same for birds. We uh, uh, gave, we listed examples of birds, characteristics of birds. In our last lesson, before this one, we listed the characteristics of amphibians. And we say that amphibians have certain characteristics. The first one we mentioned was that amphibians lay eggs in water. Then number two, learners, we gave the second characteristic. Number two, we say that amphibians live partly in water and partly on dry land. In fact, we say that the word amphibians or amphibian means two lives. So amphibians sometimes, when they are young, they live in, in water. And sometimes when they, some of them when they grow up, they stay or they live on dry land. That is the second characteristic that we gave for these colors known as amphibian. Then number three, we say that amphibians have a moist, they have a moist skin without scales. They have moist skin without scales, which helps them to breathe. They, be, they, they breathe through the skin. Then lastly, we say that amphibians are, number four, we say that amphibians are cold-blooded animals. Cold-blooded animals. Learners, that's what we learned in our last lesson. Then at the end of the lesson, I gave you revision questions, two questions. So I'm just hoping you did the questions. But if for one reason or another, because I know sometimes 
uh, because of some factors beyond your control, you may not have done the assignment. But you see, the good thing about these videos, you can pause. All right, so I'm requesting you, if you did not do the assignment, just pause the video and go and do it. Okay, then come back and proceed with the today's lesson where we want to uh, study the characteristics of reptiles. So learners today, we are moving on. We want to learn about reptiles. Reptiles. We are going to study the characteristics of reptiles. Characteristics of reptiles. Okay. This is a straight line. That one is a straight line. Okay? Reptiles. Now, learners. Learners, the main characteristics of reptiles are as follows. The main, I want you to write down, the main characteristics of reptiles are the main characteristics of reptiles are are a their bodies their bodies are covered are covered with dry scales. Bodies of reptiles are covered with dry scales. That is characteristic number number one. Learners, number two or B, we can say they lay eggs. They do what? They lay eggs. Reptiles lay eggs. In one word, we can say they are oviparous. I know some of you love vocabulary. Now, if you love vocabulary, then you can have in bracket oviparous. V paras. This means that the, the oviparous means egg laying. So we can say reptiles lay eggs, or we can say, if you love vocabulary learners, if you love vocabulary, you can say reptiles are oviparous. Okay? Oviparous. Can you say it loudly? Please just say it loudly to yourself there. Oviparous. Repeat. Oviparous. See, learners, when you, you, you verbalize words, sometimes it helps you uh, to remember them later on when you listen to your, your voice. So we can say reptiles lay eggs, or we can say reptiles are oviparous, meaning they are egg laying animals. Reptiles are egg laying animals. That is a characteristic of reptiles. Okay? Then number three, number three, number three, or C, reptiles are cold-blooded animals. Okay? They are Cold blooded. They are cold blooded animals. They are cold blooded animals. Lanas, can you remember the meaning of cold blooded animals? Cold blooded animals. Lanas, 
are animals, cold-blooded animals, are animals whose blood temperature, whose blood temperature changes with the change in the environment. Okay? In the environment. So if you have a reptile here, this is an animal, okay? Say a reptile, okay? We get, remember last time we gave examples of reptiles like uh, snakes, crocodiles, and so on. So if you have a crocodile here, the environment, the surrounding, if the surrounding is hot, then this hot temperature affects the blood temperature of the animal. Okay? If this temperature, the, if the blood temperature of, if the, the animal, the blood temperature is, is, say, is, is say low, and the external, the outside temperature is, is, uh, is, is high, then this hot temperature, this is the surrounding of this animal it affects the blood temperature or body temperature of the animal. So this animal's um, temperature will increase. It will be hotter. It will be hot. Likewise, if the surrounding of this animal is cold, if it is cold, then this animal's uh, blood temperature will also be Cold. So these cold-blooded animals are affected by the temperature of their surrounding. Okay? It's affected by the te temperature of the environment. That is cold-blooded animals. But warm-blooded animals, like human beings, human beings are warm-blooded animals. If you have a human being, okay, if you have a human being like that, has a nose and ears there, and these are just uh, plated her hair. So if you have this human being, you see this is the surrounding of the human being, but this is the body of the human being. So, warm-blooded animals, like human beings and mammals, learners, we said earlier mammals are warm-blooded animals. If the temperature in the environment is hot, it does not change the blood temperature of the animal. Do you understand? Learners. Warm blooded animals can generate their own heat. Okay? Within them, they are able, their bodies are able to regulate their temperature so that these animals can live in any environment. That's why we have people living at the coast, because it's very hot. Tomorrow morning they can come to Nairobi when it's very cold but they still survive because their bodies are not affected by the external environment. So that's the difference, learners, okay, between cold-blooded animals and warm-blooded animals. So we are discussing the characteristics of reptiles and we have said reptiles are cold-blooded animals. They are cold-blooded animals. Now, another characteristic which is common to all vertebrates, learners, is that reptiles, D, have, they have backbones, okay? Just like uh, the other vertebrates, another characteristic of reptiles, we can say, is that they have 
backbones. They have a backbone that runs from the head, a backbone that runs from the head to the tail. From the head to the tail. That is a backbone. So these are characteristics of reptiles. Then I want us to give examples of reptiles. Examples of reptiles learners. I had mentioned snakes. Okay? Snakes. I like giving common examples first. I know some of you have seen snakes. The first one is snakes. Then we have crocodiles. Crocodiles. Some of you have seen crocodiles. Crocodiles. Another example is lizards. Some of you have seen lizards. You can be, if you are observant in your house, you can see lizards walking along the, uh, the roofs. Lizards. Okay. Those of you who live uh, in up country, you must have come across chameleons. Chameleons are reptiles. Chameleons. Chameleons. Chameleons are reptiles. How about tortoise? Tortoise. Tortoise are also tortoise are reptiles. Tortoise. Tortoise. Tortoise are reptiles. Then we have turtles. 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 Turtles is another animal that falls under the category of reptiles. Turtles. Then I can say, I can write ETC, meaning there are many more. Because of time, we cannot write all of them here on the board. We've given enough examples of reptiles, number one, snakes, crocodiles, lizards, chameleons, tortoise, turtles. Tortoise and turtles. So learners, uh, that will mark the end of our today's lesson. I hope you have learned something. Go through the lesson once more. You, the good thing about the video, if you want, you can go through the video three times, four times, five times. Then you write down your notes. Please, you should be writing down these notes so that you revise later on. Then after you have gone through the video once, twice, three times, you've written your notes, I want you to do the following assignment. I'm going to write here what I call revision questions. Now, when you are answering the questions, learners, don't look at your notes. That will help you see if you can remember what we have been studying about reptiles. So, learners, write down the questions. Revision questions. Revision questions. Question number one, list four characteristics of reptiles. Question number two, give five examples of reptiles. So that is your assignment. Make sure the assignment is done. Thank you for joining our uh, classes. I uh, hope that you will be able to master this subject, which is known as science. I've talked to many learners. Most of them tell me they would want to be doctors when they grow up. 
If that is your vision, please, you need to take the subject seriously because all doctors are scientists. So make sure you uh, join the classes, write notes, take instructions, do the assignments, and then your vision will be actualized. You will be able to become the doctor that you desire to be. So once again, Thank you and God bless you.